Hey there, fellows. Okay, so I'm sure you all recognize this automobile, which is super light and see-through. We've decided to keep it for now. It's much lighter than it used to be, with them plastic body panels, which are considerably lighter than those made from metal. It is a nifty car, this one. As for the reason why we decided to keep it, well, we're gonna be driving it through the winter, as an experiment. So there's nothing wrong with it, of course, but there is one thing to bear in mind. The thing is that it's starting to get pretty cold outside. We literally just brought the car in, and already we've got condensation forming. The outside temperatures we've been seeing recently have mostly been below freezing. The problem with that is that this car right here is lacking any sort of equipment that could heat the cabin. So no heater, no heated seats, no nothing. I'd imagine that during the winter this cabin won't be very welcoming. And so here's what I suggest we do. Now why don't we try setting up a sort of... What do I even call it? Let's go with the cheapest and most versatile seat heating system you could possibly imagine. The idea is really simple. The engine generates heat, which we intend to funnel into the cabin. And so as to avoid installing a dedicated heater and all of the associated bits, why don't we get a bendy hose, take the driver's seat, and use all of that to put together a makeshift seat warmer. But instead of electricity, it'll be fed hot liquid, engine coolant. So the antifreeze is going to be delivering that heat from the engine straight to the driver while bypassing the heater core. Okay, let's get that system up and running then, shall we? Let's do this. Coming at you with some new merch, fellas. You would have noticed that we're constantly adding new stuff to our lineup, which already includes a bunch of different t-shirts. You can get yourself a baseball cap with a flat brim or with a bendy one. And now we've also added these sweet t-shirts. That say enough talk, let's do this. Which is a catchphrase of mine that you hear pretty often. Then you've got this one that depicts a motorcycle engine, so that's pretty cool. Plus, don't forget that we offer personalized mugs, which we'll send anywhere in the world. This one is leaving the country, as a matter of fact. Plus, we've got a new iteration of our document holder. As you can see, you've got a red logo instead of a white one. And you can have it just say... Garage 54 instead of showing your license plate. So yeah, it can just say Garage 54. There you go, fellas. You'll find a link in the description. Hit that, head on over and grab yourself something. DIY heated seats using engine coolant. Originally uploaded in November of 2020. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Look at what we've cooked up here, fellas. So the layout is fairly simple. The hoses that used to be routed to the heater core are now in the cabin. We've also fitted an electric water pump. Now that was an absolute must. Given that the hose is routed through the seat back in such a way that it's actually higher than the highest point of the primary engine cooling system. And so to avoid a vapor lock situation, we needed that pump in order to purge any air from the system. Anyway, so the supplementary pump and the hoses are in place. You would have just seen how we were installing all of that jazz. And now it's time to do some testing. Let's see how this seat warmer turned out. Okay, now it's time to do some testing in the field. Let's see how the system works in practice. As I'm sure you're aware, the engine needs to be warmed up first. I can easily monitor the temperature by touching the hoses. That's going to give me an understanding. 
This one is already getting warm. That's nice. That means that soon the seat itself should start getting nice and warm. And we're off. Check the temperature. There we are. Something's happening. So far, things are on the up. Fantastic. Okay, I can already feel my back getting warm. The seat back. Oh, sweet. My back is starting to warm. Isn't that nice? Why isn't the cushion getting warm, though? We've still got air, or is the padding just that much thicker? I mean, the hoses are buried in there a bit deeper. Looks like we gave this road a good thrashing. Great! The seat bag is actually nice and toasty. The engine is getting up to temperature. Exceptionally wonderful. Both hoses are hot, meaning that we've got circulation happening. And I'm happy about that. It's a bit twitchy though, as if it's not fully warmed up. Though these are plenty hot. Okay, well, let's ride around some more. Wait until the engine fully warms up. The hoses are piping hot, I mean, the seat back is scalding. But down here, it's kinda lukewarm. That said, I do feel it's starting to get warm. Twelve seconds later. Right, what do we got? The engine is up to temperature, judging by the hoses. The seat back is scorching hot. But down here, there is some heat, just not as much. I guess it'd be reasonable to assume that the padding is just thicker. The foam in the seat, the cushy part. Yeah, the padding must be thicker. And so it does get warm, but not nearly as hot as the seat back. At this point, you really need to run a valve to bring the temperature down a bit. I mean, my back is really warm right now. What a cool thing. What can I say? This sort of layout, which is simple as, it's cool stuff. At a minimal cost, you get some tangible results. 107%. But for some reason, it has to be the thicker padding. So apparently in the seat back, the hose is located at a shallower depth, so to speak. While underneath your ass, you've got a bit more cushion. Which resulted in this part taking a bit more time to heat up. Meanwhile, the seat back, that got warm like right away. This is terrific. What's most important is that it is super easy to do, like no trouble at all. It barely costs anything, though you will need a small pump. And some hose. But that's it. And a couple of tea pieces. And that's all you need to run a seat heater. One that works exceptionally well. If anybody's thinking about setting something like this up in their car for the winter, it works. And very well at that. I'm fairly sure that you can run this type of warmer in any car. It's quick, it's simple, and it's easy. And on top of that, it's safe. You don't have electricity, so nothing to short-circuit and cause a fire. I'd say we're looking at a 107% success rate here. And that's all I got for you fellas. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.